So we've got a site where we've added this e-commerce plugin. We've looked at the various settings. Now we need to start to actually add products because if you were go if you were to go to your product page, uh, you don't have anything to to work with. So we'll go back to the dashboard. If you hover over products, here's where you see view all products, add new product, and so forth. But what I want to do first is um, add categories. Uh, similar to the blog, these are ways to divide up your content. And it's very important for the e-commerce because the default is that all of our products will be visible at once unless we make categories. So let's go to products categories. It's a default product category. Uh, this fictional business, Victor's Bakery, I'm going to sell various baked goods. So using that theme, I'm going to create these categories. Name, cakes. Cakes is something I'm going to sell. Slug will automatically fill itself in after I save. Parent, I'll leave that to none. It's the, Cakes is going to be the largest or the highest organizational level. But if I were to sell different kinds of cakes, I could then create them as children elements. Description, so we activated in the settings to show the description. We're just going to say uh, handmade cakes for all occasions. These are keywords also that will help you get found when people search in the site or outside of the site. We have advanced store settings. If we wanted to uh, change some things, for example, image, no file chosen, but if we wanted to attach an image to a category, we could. I don't think we've got any interesting images at the moment. Um, so we'll skip that for the moment. Product display. Again, we don't have the gold cart, so we can't choose list or grid. If we wanted a different size thumbnails than the one that we had under settings, we could set that here. And because we set what our markets were in the other screen, that's what this is here. But if I wanted to override this, I can further change it. Check out settings. If I had created more of these form fields for checkout, I could select them here. And how will I calculate shipping? The default is the address where it's being shipped to, or I could do the billing address. So those are a lot of options, but the only thing I did was I created a name for this category and a description. So I'll click Add New Product Category. Uh, do you need to um, mark the shipping address even though it's the default, or just leave it blank? I would leave it blank because uh, it is the default already. So I'm going to add the new product category. If I go back to the top, I've got a new category. So uh, to set up, to set this up a little bit, go ahead and also create another category of cookies and another category of pies. So we're going to have cakes, cookies, and pies. Write whatever you want under the description. So 
just create a few more of these. I have pies, cookies, and cakes with the people products category. After I create some categories, then we have the ability to choose under parent over here. So let's say I'm trying to sell um, sugar-free cookies and cookies that actually taste good. So then I can make these different subcategories. So let's say sugar-free will be a child of cookies. And further organize sugar-free cookies by selecting parent. So that shows because I've selected a parent, now this is indented and sugar-free is a subsection of subset of cookies. You just save it? In yes. Exactly. Go to the very bottom and click Save, and then it'll automatically add to the top. You don't get any feedback, so after you click Save here, make sure you go back to the top, and then you'll see, you should see it on the right. Bottom left corner. So we have some categories here. We also have tags. You get the idea because we looked at blogs already, and we looked at categories and tags in the blog. So I won't do tag. I won't do product categories at the moment. What I want to do instead is actually make some products. So um, if you go look at the products screen, there's no products. Uh, you can then go to add a new product, and we'll have various things to fill in for every product. Let's uh, add a new product. Now eventually, uh, after we create a couple of simple products, we'll create some more advanced products. For example, I would like to sell um, pies of different sizes. 9-inch uh, pie, 12-inch pie. I would like to sell cookies in batches. 6 of them at a time, 12 of them at a time. Those are going to be variations. We have a whole thing to talk about variations a little bit later. So we're going to create just basic product for the moment. Let's just say um, that we sell, we sell um, oatmeal raisin cookie. Again, uh, later we will see that we can sell them in batches. Right now, let's say it's one, one unit, one cookie. Oatmeal raisin cookie is what we're about to sell here. We'll say here our signature giant cookie. Eight inch diameter of tastiness. I don't think I see them as much as I used to, but I remember the, the giant cookie craze a few years ago. There were these huge cookies for sale. Um, so here's our version. Our version that is... that stands out. On the right side we have product tags. The idea here is uh, maybe after the fact I create a category of oatmeal. I'm going to sell different kinds of oatmeal goods. 
So I will tag them as product tags. When I create a tag or a category from this screen, I don't have an edit. I have to go back to its respective screen to make a change. And under our product category as well, I'm going to select cookies. Uh, continuing on the right column, we've got set featured image. I don't have any, co any cookie photos. We'll, we'll get one in a moment. We've got other things first. Product pricing. We've got price, sale price. So let's say the giant cookie. What would be a good price for a giant cookie? Five dollars. Whatever price you like. I'll do five dollars. Two dollars. Okay. Our, well, ours are gourmet, so we'll do five dollars. Any, any price will work. So, uh, and then remember the, the tricks to get people to buy. Well, it's not five dollars, it's four ninety seven. Just make it easy. Five dollars. So, sale price. I could set up a sale price that today, one time only, we're selling them for three dollars. So what will happen is when people see this product in the sh in the in the catalog, it will show that it will say, you know, original price five dollars, current price, sale price, three dollars. We'll keep it simple and we'll just say a regular price at the moment. We'll look at sale price later. This assumes five dollars, five U.S. dollars, not Canadian dollars, and so forth. If I wanted to add other currency options, I could set them up here. quantity discount, so how many are bought, what will then they be discounted to? If you buy, I don't know, three or more, then they'll drop down to four dollars each. Again, we'll keep it simple, but you get the idea here that this is pretty straightforward. Purchase is a donation, so there's a way here to activate something that you're selling, a donation. So you can use this plugin to create a website for a nonprofit organization that accepts donations. We're creating a product, quote unquote, but it's going to be at, accepted as a donation if we turn this on. It'll just be stored as a donation in the database in, in the sales screen. You'll still collect five dollars through PayPal and all of that. But if this were a donation, you can use that feature. Yes. We got that. I told you my product, they have to pay before they see it. How do I do that? That would be more of a subscription. Um, I think the default here, what we have with this with this uh, e-commerce plugin, the default, I don't think we can do that. Okay. We would have to upgrade to the gold cart, or I believe over on WooCommerce, we might be able to have that feature. I haven't had to do that recently, so I, I don't have the full answer, but we can look it up. So we've got stock inventory, SKU, stock keeping unit. This is optional. This is for your own records. Let's say I have a warehouse full of a product, and in my QuickBooks or whatever, I have everything organized with my own special codes. So internally, what's the special code? in my inventory system that is that product. It's optional. But let's say uh, everything that's marked with a C, O, is a cookie, and this is product 001, and it's the regular version, so dash one, if it was the sugar-free version, you know, the oatmeal cookie would be C, O, 001, but the sugar-free version would be two. This is completely optional, whatever system you have, I don't believe the regular person sees this. This is more for your records internally. We can leave it here. If there's a limit to the stock and we turn that on, well, we'll say we've only got you know 12 of these to sell. If we run down to zero, if we sell out, send the owner an email. If we're down to two, send the owner an email. And when they run out of the out of my stock, unpublish. Don't show the product anymore on the site. 
one reason to leave it on is to show people what they've missed. Uh, this product used to be for sale. It's currently sold out. Come back to come back to the site to see more product later. Subscribe to the newsletter to be notified when it's for sale again. So that takes a little more, more setup because what I would do in this case is leave it off so that people see what they've missed and then go back and edit the description. Once they've sold out, right here I make a link that says click here to get notified when there's a new stock. Now it doesn't happen automatically, you have to do it manually. You, you change your stock here and send an email. So if I wanted to do a limited number of stock, I could do that. I, I will say just it's unlimited at the moment. We can make more of those cookies, so I'll, I'll turn it off. We used taxes on the settings screen, so taxes will occur here. Uh, if I want to turn off taxes for this product, I can do so. If I want to override how much taxation happens, I can do that here, and this is in currency, not percentage. So if I add, you know, three, it's an automatic three dollars more of tax to that product. So those are, those were some items, um, basic items regarding the product on the right. They make pretty much sense. And some people will need an item and some people won't. Let's say I want to set my featured image. Click Set Featured Image. And in our media library, I think we've got a couple of built-in items. None of them make sense for this product. But what you can do is just take any one of these pictures, use any one of those pictures, or you can go off oatmeal cookie. You can go find a cookie picture. Again, we're, uh, I'm saying here to do something that I said not to do. I said not, don't go to the search engine and find someone's product and use it. I said go to Pixabay or go to those other sites, but just for our purposes here, quickly I can use an image. download the image and then re-upload it. And then set featured image. Because of the Yoast plugin, we then get this section for SEO. We would optimize this product as well. We would set up a focus keyword like oatmeal raisin cookie. And we would follow the recommendations to optimize this one so that it gets away from the red dot to anything else. Getting it away from the gray dot or the red dot. Getting it, uh, obviously, green dot is the best, but if we get it to anything closer, that's good. There's a whole section on variations that we'll talk about after we get some more experience creating simple products.
product delivery. Shipping, product will not be shipped to the customer. Obviously that makes sense if I'm going to sell virtual products, if I'm going to sell mp3s or videos or something, I have to um, turn that on because I'm not actually shipping anything. And here's what you would set up uh, if you created uh, shipping based on weight or dimensions. I would set that here. So if you know this is a one pound cookie, this would be then set up to um, calculate shipping price based on weight. If it's based on dimensions, we would set up here a length, width, and height in inches, centimeters, or meters. If I'm setting up flat rate, here are how much I'm charging shipping as a flat rate, no matter its weight or size. Under download, this only matters to some people if you're going to be selling ebooks or music and such. So notice we have a way to upload a file. You can attach as many as you want. So this product will be attached to a file, which then the person can buy. And when they buy it, they'll get an email notification receipt that gives them the link to buy your product, to download the product. Depending on the size that you bought at uh, GoDaddy and Bluehost and such, uh, this will give this will be the limitation of how many of these products can you can you upload. But if they buy it, then it's going to be gone. They can like upload it just all the time the same one, like the different people. It'll keep it to uh, you upload it to your server, and it'll stay there for as many people that need to buy it. But you have to upload. It. Well, for each different product. If this is one ebook, yeah, yeah. I, I upload it and it's always attached to this product, so many people can buy this product and it doesn't remove it. Oh, I like it. You don't have to, you just upload one, one space. Right? Yes. Yes. To continue that same question I have, can I put that file in? Yes, exactly. Is that the, whatever you just said? Yes. They have to pay to see. Is, maybe is this a PDF file? Exactly, it could be a PDF, it could be a uh, music file, anything. And this is where you're going to attach that, that file to, to okay. here. This is what you're selling. We also have external link, which is not that uh, common for most people. Yes? I have a general question. This information we put our website, some of them are secure for a company. Yes. So when we publish it, it will give a lot of information about our products, about our policy, about our prices, to everyone. Hmm. So how we can divide it? Because if a little bit you continue from inventory, from where we buy the sugar, where we buy the additive, it's a whole big program hmm. from A to Z, hmm. from our purchases as a company to the final product. Yes. How this website divided between what uh, I mean, what you can show or you cannot show? Well, it wouldn't show any of your process. It wouldn't show where you get your sugar or your additives. That's behind the scenes. That doesn't get shown because what only gets shown here is the final product you're selling. This because is what you would only show put. Inventory means but that's inventory of what you're ready to sell, not inventory of what you use to create the product. So also in, the policy of the how much you're going to give discount, mm -hmm. which day you're going to give discount, mm -hmm. future of your product. Because these are some policy unique for your company and for your product. 
That's why. My question is very simple. Is there what you teach now? Can you show all of this information properly? Yes, that's going to be the default. Everything that we're learning here will be public. If you don't want things to be public, they can be protected to various ways and various degrees. But unfortunately, almost anything we put on the internet on a website is we should assume it's going to be public, even if we don't want it. Maybe I upload a file and I think I have it secure. There's the possibility that it could still be found and downloaded and indexed and such. So unfortunately we have to think in terms of anything we upload is going to be public, even if I don't want it to be. So we have to be sure that we're only uploading what should be public. Yeah, in theory, even with passwords, because what if it's a weak password? What if it's a bad password? Someone figures out your password that they're in. What if someone has the password that is authorized, but they get hacked, and now someone else has that password to then get into your item? So cybersecurity is complex, but whatever you sh should not be public, don't put it on the internet is the short answer, but that's not the best answer. So my question is that reverse engineering is possible. It is, if always. If you go to some products of cookies of very famous companies, mm -hmm. then you can find all the information they have paid for a you could. Yeah, so that's why that answer falls more on you to what will you put online that you're comfortable putting online. Worst case scenario, someone's going to break in. So what are you comfortable putting there uh, to think about what may be found? I would only put here things for a client that I know should be f f seen by people, not my competitors. So. And my second question is that some uh, request what product may be by telephone. Mm -hmm. It's not by email, so not by seeing our site. Digital, huh? Uh, there is some restaurants, at least I have, I have seen, when you call them, as you call them, their monitor is showing all your information by your phone number. Mm -hmm. Is it here also the same feature? No, that's, uh, that's separate. Program, yeah? yeah, it would be some plugin, most likely to to look up a person, to look them up with public records and such. So it's not here automatically, not most likely. Record. Maybe called you five times ago, ten times ago. Oh, okay. That that would be more like customer management, uh, CRM, customer relationship management. That also that keeps track of number of calls and past sales. It has a little bit of that in. Not the, in this in the in the not in the screen but in the uh, store sales there is some customer relationship database data being saved here what they've purchased but not about like calls and follow-ups and that sort of thing that would be a separate service yes yes uh, on the screen you have the screen you want to collect the uh, audio cookies Yes, you edit the oatmeal cookie, and then if you keep scrolling down, you're going to find in the section of product deliveries, the download. So if you go to um, oatmeal, where is it? In the products. Under oatmeal. I select the, the product, and then I go to variations, right? We're not using variations yet. Uh, so we're on your product delivery product. section. So how can we get the, uh, the, the audio cookie? You have to create it. You have to go to Products, Add New Product. Uh, okay. Add New Product. So the last item that I have here is external link. Uh, we're going to see this is not useful for a lot of people, but for some people it's very useful. External link is I'm not actually going to sell these cookies on my site. I'm going to sell them on another site. I'm going to sell them on eBay, or I'm going to sell them on Etsy, or I'm going to sell them somewhere else. So I'm only going to kind of show a preview chocolate chip cookie. And then when they click, <coughs> it's not going to have add to cart. The button is going to say buy now or whatever, and that's going to then go to some other site. So let's say I was selling this 
I had a link over on uh, Amazon.com, Cookie Choco One. Let's say I've got a product that I'm selling on some other site. So I put that address here, and then I'll, I'll say uh, buy on Amazon. So the person won't go through the shopping cart of my site. They click the button and it'll take them to Amazon where they will continue the shopping cart. We had one client that we've done this. This is pretty uncommon, but this client was an author. This, uh, this was a self-published author. He had some of the books printed and in his garage that he would ship. And he had some books that were ebooks, but he was selling them through Amazon. So we set it up here that it would show the product with a picture and the thumbnail and the description, but then they click the button, buy on Amazon, and it would go to that link on Amazon where they would finish the purchase. Hmm? Just put the Amazon eBay is not enough before you. Is not what? It's not enough. I mean, you should organize with them, should link with them, should talk with them. Product. Yes, there's, contract with them. There's, there's much more than that. Yes, the, the way it works is very simple, but the details of it are not. Definitely, you need what sort of uh, ownership and contracts and copyrights. Definitely. And the Amazon is going to be the same price as here, or you can change it? You can change it there, but probably more expensive because they take their price, they take their commission from having your product on their site. So, most likely a little more expensive. So. It's a way that when you check something on Amazon, go back and search by Google this, the original company and check the price there. You could, yeah. You can see what's. Uh, you can always do a search and find even more information. So then, then you see it's more expensive in another place, and then maybe people won't buy because it's more expensive. Question. Um, we have on our menu uh, the Amazon and eBay external link already. It's different. It's different because what's on the menu will take you to, like, let's say the main store listing. Your, your Amazon homepage, yes. This should take you directly to a product. One individual product. Yeah. One individual product on Amazon. So again, it's not too common for people, so I'm, I'm not putting anything external. This is not a digital product, so I won't put anything under download. And shipping, I'll leave it as is, uh, but you can figure out what to change there as necessary. Scrolling down, we then have more ways to show up our product. Image gallery. So let's say we've got some sort of product uh, that I need to show different angles front side, back side, profile of the product. I can create a gallery to show the different angles of the product. Uh, I don't have anything uh, like that at the moment. I'm just using the one featured image. That'll be good enough. But I can create a gallery of as many products as I want, as many s shots of it or sides of it as I want short description. The long description is what is up on top over here. What, as much as we want to write here, that's the long description. The short description is like little preview text uh, about the product. So whatever we want to write here, um, just anything. Let's see, it's 1981. Another, another bit of information, a little shorter than the other paragraph. Personalization. User can personalize this product by leaving a message. Users can upload a single product page to the purchase log. This is very specialized. Not everyone needs this one. This is, makes more sense for, let's say I'm doing birthday cakes. That would be a good product to personalize. I want people to leave the meshes that say, please write on to it, happy birthday, Billy. So we turn that on, and uh, they would be able to do so. 
Maybe I have a system where I'm also allowing people to upload a picture. Maybe I can custom bake cookies, cookies with your picture on it. Maybe I have that technology to print, you know, an edible picture on the cookie. So if I turn that on, people will be able to upload a picture. That gets you into the issues of copyrighted images. If I'm allowing anyone to upload a picture, and most people don't really know too much about copyrights, well, they're going to upload a picture of SpongeBob so they can put it on your cake, and they don't know the fo they don't own the copyright to SpongeBob. So one way to deal with this is to turn it on and then mention in the description, please do not upload copyrighted content; it will be rejected, or whatever way you want to handle it. It's it's not automatic; you have to specify it. I'm going to leave that off. Same thing with that personalization. I could write something like, uh, no vulgar language will be added to the cookies. You would add that to the description, and then you have a little bit of coverage. allow people to comment on the product. This is the same as like the blog posts. You can say yes or no. And then this trackbacks and pingbacks, don't worry about that. That's that's kind of an old um, old blogging setting, which is not that necessary at the moment. Could you describe the metadata there? Oh yes, metadata. Okay, metadata, this is an advanced one. If I wanted to be able to do extra features um, which often requires some coding. That's what metadata is. If I want to link products together in a special way, if I want to program more features, I add this metadata. So for us, it's, it's a little beyond what we'd like to do. Just for the product? For this one product. So let's go back to the very top and let's publish that product. We published it, it automatically goes to our product section. Go, go to visit site, go to your products page, and check your product. So after you publish, you can visit site, and any of these new products will be under your products page. I would like to eventually change that so that it's not called products page, it's called the shop, or it's called for sale, or it's called goodies, or something. Click products page, we got one product. And in the products page here, one product. Now based on the theme, there's like a lot of empty space on the left that's based on the theme. Oatmeal raisin cookie, there's the cookie that size. I click on it, it pops open. There's the thick box. This is the long description. This is the short description. I would like it to say something besides more details that requires customized code. Quantity. What about 11 of them? The product is in stock. $5. Shipping hasn't been set because we haven't added a shipping address and such. Average customer reviews. Nothing yet. I can add a rating. So at the moment, this is an amazing product, five stars, one review. I could add it to the cart, add to cart. You get that little pop-up right there. That was that fancy box, that fancy pop-up. So go to checkout, continue shopping. I go to checkout. That basically took me to the checkout screen under the drop-down menu. This product with quantity, five each, total $55. Has 
as I fill in this information, like my zip code and all of that, it will then further calculate shipping, if I set up shipping. This is where it asks for my social media. That's one of those fields that we created. When I fill in the items under billing info and click on the check mark, same as billing, it fills in the others. I can't purchase until the terms and conditions have been met. I agree to the terms and conditions. We set those last time. Click on that and it opens up a window with your terms and conditions. So whatever you wrote in your terms and conditions to cover yourself legally, that's what that is, and it won't let people proceed until you check that on. And obviously all the required fields. If I did fill all of this in, and I did set up PayPal, if I did set up PayPal, the next screen would take me to a PayPal screen where you can buy, where you can fill in your credit card or debit card with security, and then it'll let you buy. It's on localhost, so it's not secure. But if you do set up PayPal and purchase, it will then go to a secure screen. Design-wise, again, I have a lot of empty space over here. I like to stretch it out and all of that. That depends on your theme. This theme is not quite an e-commerce friendly theme. Our 27 theme, 2017 theme is not really built for e-commerce. It's more for a regular website or blogging. So if I want a more e-commerce friendly theme, I would go search themes. add a new theme with a keyword of e-commerce. This is something you can do on your own, but these are themes that are a little bit more focused on e-commerce that might make your screens look a little nicer. This stuff can be changed, however, if you, uh, if you know some of the coding. Under the uh, Appearance Editor, this exposes the code. So if you know the code, you'll be able to change any option, but that requires pretty advanced coding. There's one product in the Products page. If you were to click on the Oatmeal Raisin Cookie title, that's also an active link, which will then focus on that one product. It shows the picture pretty big, and it shows the detail of what you wrote. Here's the breadcrumbs. We're on the site, we're at the products page, we're under cookies, this cookie. That's the breadcrumb. Personalize your product. I turned on the option to let people personalize it. Complete this form to include personalized message. I can say, please add a smiley face. Quantity, add to cart, etc. So that would be added to when the, per the person purchases this product. It will be added to their whole order, and then you'll see it, and then hopefully fulfill that part of the order.
Let's practice with um, another product. Um, we're going to create more products so that then we can take advantage of categories. Um, you practice, that is, uh, create another product. Uh, I've made a cookie. Uh, go create another cookie, like chocolate chip or something. So go create, a, create another product. Notice we have a shortcut now. If you're in the visit site under new, we have a way to quickly create a new product. So instead of going back to the dashboard, we have new product. Chocolate chip cookie. So you can fill that in however you want. You want to definitely um, add the um, category. Anything else, price and so forth, just make it up. You may put a picture if you'd like or not, just to see what that looks like without a picture. But definitely categorize it. After you publish that chocolate chip cookie, also then um, create one more product of, a, let's say, a uh, birthday cake. Try a cake, yeah, like a birthday cake.
Okay, so I've got three products in total now. If I go look at my products page, birthday cake, chocolate chip cookie, and oatmeal raisin cookie. The oatmeal cookie is at the end because alphabetically I set up my products list alphabetically. Chocolate chip is second and birthday cake is first. So um, I did add a picture to that particular product but not to the chocolate chip, and it just looks like this generic icon. That's what happens when you don't put a picture. Okay, so the point of using categories is that the default products page, we get all products at once. The point of categories is to divide this up. So let's go look at our menus in order to do that. We're going to edit the menu so that it's not called products page anymore. I'm tired of that. It's not product. These are our yummy cakes and such. So I want to change that name, not products page anymore. And then I want to show drop-down menus of our different products. So we'll go back to, uh, you see, we've also now got a shortcut here. You can go to your site, Menus. Let's go edit the menu. First thing I want to do is I no longer want this to be called Products Page. The way you can easily fix that is if you open that particular menu item, clicking on the triangle, Navigation Label. So no matter what the original page was called, you can always change what the link looks like. So edit products page and change it to something that makes more sense or something that's more friendly. I'm not selling products. That sounds like I'm selling, you know, uh, equipment or something. So what would be a better name here? Maybe shop. Maybe the store. That's what will appear on the link instead. name this the kitchen. You don't want to get too creative because then you're going to confuse people. People are looking for store or products or category or catalog or for sale. Calling it the kitchen is clever, but people might not understand I'm selling stuff here. So I'll keep it simple with shop. The original is the products page. Next, what I want to do is, if a person were to click on shop, it will show all products, all three of our products. Instead, I want to show people, you can go look at only cakes or only cookies. Well, those are product categories. So I'm going to add the product categories and organize them. So far, I have cookies and I have cakes. This is showing you what, what exists. Under most used, those exist. View all shows you everything. Under view all, let's say I do want cakes, cookies, sugar-free pies. I want all of those. That's going to make my menu even more full of stuff. So I'm going to remind us how to make a subcategory. Like subcategory trick. So first, I'm going to add all of those. I don't, I'm not selling pies yet, so it'll be an empty category. That's fine. But I'm going to sell cookies and cakes and all of that. All of those get added to the menu. I want all of these to appear after I hover over something else. Oh, also, sugar-free is a subsection of cookies. So people go over cookies, regular cookies, sugar-free cookies. All of these four, I want them to appear inside of shop. But I want someone to hover over shop, and then it says, you know, 
shopping categories or shopping sections or product categories. So the trick is I can create sort of a dummy placeholder element as a top parent, which then you hover over and then you get the sub elements. And the trick to do that is to do a custom link. We did this a while ago, but let's do it again. I want a custom link that will go nowhere, so the URL, change that to the pound sign, remember that? And then we'll say link types this categories. I'm going to add a custom link of categories, which I will then put into, move into the shop. I'll add a custom category, or the custom link, I'll put it under shop. And then I'm going to move the categories under that placeholder. So pound sign, link text, add. Then I will move categories so that it's below shop. And then I'll put cakes under categories and cookies and pies. And be careful that the dotted line this is about to become a subcategory of a subcategory, sugar-free. I don't want that. I want the dotted lines to be there on the same level as the previous one. Here will be a subcategory of a subcategory. Here is a subcategory of cookies, and here is on the same level as cookies. So we have pies, cookies, and cakes as a subcategory of categories, which is inside of shop. And that's a custom link that goes nowhere. When you make changes to the menu, remember to save. And then when you visit site, now it's shop instead of product category. You hover there, you see categories with its own little link. You hover there, and then you see cakes, cookies, and pies. I had a subcategory of sugar-free, which is another cookies. And be careful, subcategories on subcategories on subcategories might get confusing. And especially when people move their mouse, it's probably happening to you. I, I need to move my mouse from here to here. Whoops, I moved too far, and then that one goes away. And I'm trying to move over here. My mouse moves over here, and then that goes away. So be careful about these long names. But the point here is if I click on cakes, in the category shop, I will see only cakes that I've published. Birthday cake. Okay, shop, categories, cookies. I have two cookies so far. You should have two cookies. Chocolate chip, oatmeal. The breadcrumb shows I made cookies inside of products. It still says product because the original page was called product, even though it changed the link up there, unfortunately. You would need to go back to the original page and change its slug and title to be shop. It's on the site. And people can still click simply on shop, and that will show all of products alphabetically. Categories doesn't do anything because it's got the dummy link. And then everything else does have that. Sugar free, I added one item to sugar free. So there's one item.
So if you've got that working good, uh, let's take one more break and when we come back we'll look at a few more ways to create these products. So we've got a few more categories and such with products. It's 8.25, we'll be back at 8.35.